and me. I run the Instagram account Books of Brain Food and today I want to recommend you a book based on your zodiac sign. You might be thinking like what are your qualifications to recommend me a book based on my zodiac sign and the answer is none. I do have a lifelong casual interest in astrology. I watch a lot of astrology YouTube videos and like TikToks and stuff like that. Well, I think I have like a fair understanding of what each sign's like and what they would like in a book. Yeah, I won't tell you where to put your money in the stock market, but I can recommend you a book. So we'll start with air signs and my own sign. First one I'll start with is Gemini, which is what I am. Make me a Gemini. Um, and for Gemini I've picked Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. Um, I think even the idea of having these like two authors collaborating on this book is kind of like a Gemini thing. So the premise of this book is that there is an angel and a demon who have been like at war for centuries, competing with each other and fighting with each other. But they sort of come together whenever there's this prophecy that the world's gonna end because the Antichrist is being born. They kind of have to like put the differences aside. It's really dark, it's really funny. I think having the idea of like the angel and the demon is like a real Gemini thing. I also think it's just like the perfect book for a Gemini, like it's funny. Um, it has a little bit of like magic going on. I think it's just a really good book in general. Um, oh, I just find a bit more. The Amazon Prime show of this is quite good as well. It's got like David Tennant and Michael or Martin Sheen, I can't remember which one. Yeah, I recommend this for Geminis. So the next sign I'm going to recommend for is a Libra. I think for this one I'll recommend Emma by Jane Austen. I think Emma Woodhouse is like the ultimate Libra, like she's a socialite, she's keeping the peace between all these different characters and like keeping the peace within her own household. She's kind of like at a loss about relationships and she ends up in this like tempestuous enemies to lovers relationship path with her neighbour. But yeah, I just think Emma herself is such a Libra and I think that because this book centres so much around her that it just makes it like the perfect pick. Um, so the next one, Aquarius. I think for Aquarius I would recommend Milkman by Anna Burns. So this one is kind of like aloof and sort of like a bit awkward to get into because it's quite abstract and experimental um, which I think is kind of like an Aquarius thing but once you do get into it it's really clever it's like heartwarming and heart-wrenching in equal measure so it's about this character called Middle Sister she's attempting to keep her mother from discovering her boyfriend and at the same time there's these advances coming from this man in her community that she doesn't really want to be associated with so this one's kind of like abstractly about the troubles in Northern Ireland so it's about this girl who's like growing up and going through her like coming of age time through such a masculine period in the country's history and about how difficult that is whenever there's all this violence and terror going on around you. So this did win the Booker Prize in 2018 um, and I think that Aquarius will like that accolade from like other literary people. So let's move on to the fire signs now. So for Aries I've chosen Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. I think it's because this book has like so many big personalities in it. Except for the main character Francis, but the rest of the characters are all like performers. Even Francis herself is like a spoken word poet. They have like these big egos and they just clash so much whenever they go into relationships with each other. Um, I think even just the social nature of this book very much centres around the friend group and there's a lot of drama. So I think this one is like perfect for Aries. Okay, so next we have Leo. I recently discovered that I have a Leo moon. For Leo, I'm choosing Breakfast on Pluto by Patrick McCabe. Leo is the sign that's like, sort of like a bit self-centered and like the main character. Um, and I think that just like sums up this book so well. It's about this boy who's also growing up during the troubles, but to kind of like escape this masculine violence that's going on around him, he kind of turns to like the more feminine things. Um, like he starts to wear his mother's clothes and like experiment with makeup. And he gets very into like old Hollywood, old female Hollywood stars. But to kind of like escape the horrors that are going on around him, he like creates this movie of his life in his head. And you're kind of like going back and forth between like his version of his life and the actual version of his life. Um, it's really, really sad. Sums up that thing about Leo's that like they're able to make their whole life in their head like a movie. There's also a film of this. I think I prefer the film to the book. The film stars Killian Murphy and I just think he does like a brilliant job of starring as um, Patrick Braden, who is the character in this. Um, the book kind of is, takes on a different ending to the um, to the film, but I think I prefer the film ending. And the next one I want to recommend for is Sagittarius. So for them I'm recommending The Night Tiger by Yang Si Chu. Partly my reasoning for this is that it's set in Asia, it's set in um, 1930s Malaya. I thought that would appeal to Sagittarius since they're kind of the sign that likes travel um, and they're quite globally minded. I also thought the idea of like the tiger and like they're Sagittarius so they're like a fire sign so they'll be quite like fierce. Um, but this book follows 11 year old houseboy Ren. Um, he has to find his dead master's severed finger 
um, before his master turns into a night tiger, which is like a, an element of Malaysian mythology, I think. Um, before he like roams the earth and like kills all these people. This is kind of like mystery, it has like a really strong propelling narrative. Um, the characters are really nice and um, it's really interesting to be situated in that time of history. This one's really good, I think it's really underrated. Um, I think it was a Reese Witherspoon book club pick um, a while ago, but I just think like it should have so much more hype than it does, it's really really good. Now for the water signs, um, so the first one I want to recommend is for Cancer and I'm recommending Love in the Time of Cholera by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Um, this one's like really really famous, it's like a really famous love story. I've only read like a little bit of this, I want to finish it in the next few months. It's about um, like unrequited love, um, love across the period of somebody's life and about like loyalty and I think that's like cancer to a T. Um, I also think that just a story about love and like heartbreak would like suit a cancer. It's like a little bit sad and like heartwarming as well. I think that one's like absolutely perfect for cancer. For Pisces, I picked Never Let Me Go purely because this one's really sad and I know that Pisces like to cry so um, this one will make you cry, like guaranteed. So this book is about students who grow up at boarding schools together, three of them in particular. So there's Tommy, Ruth and Kathy and they kind of have this like lifelong struggle between um, who's going out with who. Whenever they leave school they find out that the school that they attended was not what they thought. I don't want to spoil it but basically they're just kind of like struggling to have these relationships while all these other terrible things are going on in their life. It's like a little bit dystopian but Kazuo Ishiguro is like a really really good writer. It's all about like creation and I know the Pisces is quite a creative sign. So yeah I think this one is like perfect for Pisces. So for Scorpio, I have a Scorpio rising and um, this book like really reminds me of Scorpio. It's Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. This is about an, a young 20-something Irish girl and she goes to live in Hong Kong to teach on the TEFL course. She doesn't really like children, which I think is kind of like a Scorpio thing. She like is a bit jaded and like doesn't really like her life. She's very sarcastic, very witty, so this is quite funny to read. Kind of like has all these emotional walls up and it's about like a character that comes into her life and like tries to break down those walls. Nisha Dolan is like really funny and um, there's a lot of lines in this that I was like, oh my god I can't believe she just said that. I think that kind of like wit and sass is like really good for Scorpio with the underlying emotional baggage. <laughs> now the sun has decided to come out. So now I want to talk about earth signs. Um, this is probably the sign I understand the least because I don't have any earth sign placements. So for Taurus I wanted to recommend The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. My reasoning for this is because Taurus is ruled by Venus and Venus is the sign associated with like femininity. This book has like a lot to do with like Mother Earth. Um, it's like this sort of like fantasy or like alternative history. Um, the Earth is like really turbulent and like is always moving and these characters are trying to navigate this like really hostile earthen landscape. There's these characters called the Origines who are able to control the earth and they are like very ostracized in society because people are so afraid of them. There's a lot of different things in this like race parallels that are really interesting and the author N.K. Jemisin really intends that in her writing. And it follows these three women called Essen, Demaya and Cyanide. It's very much focused on like womanhood. This book is really good and it's part of a series so if you like this one there's like plenty more to explore. And um, N.K. Jemisin's really good at like world building and things like that. Um, so I think this could be interesting for our tours. So for Virgo, I find this really hard because I think Virgos are like really practical and really logical and I'm really not either of those things so I kind of have to pick a book that I like didn't get on with very well. But I picked Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. Um, this is non-fiction so I think like that's good for Virgos. Um, it's basically this like selective like history of the earth like teaches you about like the way that we think and why we think that way and the way that our societies are set up and the way they've evolved. It's like good for Virgos, I think they'll enjoy this. And yeah, I'm listening to the audiobook of this right now because um, it's kind of struggling to like sit down and read it. Maybe try that if you're not a Virgo and you are interested in reading this, but I think definitely Virgos will have a really big interest in this. So my last recommendation is for Capricorn and I chose The Buried Giant by Kazuo Ishiguro. Capricorns are a sign that are quite like stoic and like good at putting up with like the hard things in life. So The Buried Giant is about a couple and they're crossing this land um, it's very also, also like a very hostile environment and they're having to make this like perilous journey to find their son. It's a little bit fabulistic, it's um, a little bit based on history but it's also just this story of like perseverance which I think would be quite interesting to Capricorn. So yeah that's my astrology book recommendations. I hope you find something that you like um, even if it's from another sign like don't be afraid to cross the boundaries. Yeah if you like or hate the book that I sent to your sign let me know um, I think it'd be quite interesting. 
Um, I've been learning so much about astrology at the minute. But yeah, um, you can read my blog. I have all my reviews on there. Um, some of these books are on there too. Um, or you can follow me on Instagram or TikTok for more content like this. And yeah, bye!